Hey guys, this is Chris with Live Life Outdoors, and welcome to part two of my series on building an AR-308 on a budget. And uh, on this video we're going to be going through the installation of the lower parts kit, as well as a receiver extension buffer tube. And uh, quick background, I went with the Aero Precision lower parts kit. Um, I'll explain why during the installation. And also I was able to find it the least expensive uh, as well. I found it on Schuler Arms website. Uh, it's actually $70 there right now on sale. Plus you have to factor in shipping, but that was the least expensive I was able to find it. Also you can find it on Aero Precision's website for around $89, uh, again plus shipping. Now the uh, receiver extension buffer tube, I was able to find here at a local shop, and I, I like supporting the local businesses. Uh, that was $15.99 for the tube, uh, but I was also able to find it on Midway USA's website for $14.79 plus shipping. Um, kind of a nice thing with Midway especially is if you group a lot of purchases together you can usually get a deal or even free shipping. So just kind of some things to keep in mind. Uh, buy your parts in groups. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. Now I went with the Aero Precision lower parts kit and laid it all out in no particular order. Um, that way you can get a feel for what's included. Uh, obviously with the Aero Precision lower receiver that I have, it has an integrated trigger guard and it does not have any roll pins. So these two roll pins and the trigger guard I'm going to go ahead and take out of the frame. I just wanted to show you what was in there. Uh, but these are actually going to be the parts that I will be installing. Now the reason why I went with the Aero Precision lower parts kit is because AR-3 weights aren't quite as standardized as the AR-15s. I have read that with Aero Precision uh, it's better to use the Aero Precision uh, parts kit with their receiver. Um, otherwise if you don't you can still make it work but it's going to be a little extra work. There's a little bit of filing, uh, sanding, kind of some fitting that uh, is, are just some extra steps that I would rather not go through. Plus I am quite fond of Aero Precision parts. So with that said, let's go ahead and start the install. To install the magazine catch, uh, you're going to need the magazine catch, magazine catch button, and of course the spring. Start by inserting the magazine catch into the magazine catch hole. And then insert while holding on to the magazine catch your spring and then start the button now you're going to want obviously the texture as you can see you're going to want that texture on the outside so you can actually feel that that way you know you got it in the right orientation you're going to want to push that in there the magazine catch will actually start to come out so you can support it and then just get started on twisting it and tightening it into the actual magazine catch button just a few turns. Once you've got that started what I like to do is to take a pencil because of the rubber eraser so that way I know it's not going to scratch this at all and then I actually take it and push it in and once you've got that uh, pushed in as far as it'll go with your pencil on the other side you can continue to screw that magazine catch release on. Now once you've gotten that tightened uh, it's some of the different uh, lower uh, parts kits they'll bottom out or something or they'll become flush right here in the case of Aero Precision it doesn't because this is actually quite an extended uh, button so what you want to do is just make sure that you have plenty of clearance uh, if I can get that plenty of clearance when you're actually depressing it and of course it's a good idea to just make sure that this doesn't spin when you've got it depressed with your finger the magazine catch that is and then of course you can uh, test it. it's always a good idea so I have a P-mag clicks in nice and retained push the release and it just drops right out now to install the bolt release you'll need the bolt release the spring the plunger and then instead of a roll pin and AR 308s they take a threaded pin here now this actually was included with my receiver so you want to double check to make sure that your receiver came with one and then of course you'll need a small hex key to actually install that threaded pin now take your plunger 
And what I like to do is put the spring on it so that way they go in together. You go ahead and you put that into place in that hole. Then you take your bolt release and put it in, into place as well. And you're going to feel that uh, spring tension so just kind of hold that into place. Then you have your threaded pin and I've got that actually on the 1 16th hex key. So it's a little bit easier for me to be able to show you guys and line it up. Then of course start tightening it. Now I did put the smallest uh, amount of thread locker on there just to keep it in place. Now you'll feel that when it's fully tightened and of course just kind of test the function and the smoothness and then that's in place. To install the fire control group you'll need these parts. You'll need the obviously the trigger, the hammer, the trigger spring, hammer spring, the trigger and hammer pins, the disconnector, and the disconnector spring. The important thing to remember on the disconnector spring is it kind of flares out on the bottom. So it's actually larger on the bottom than it is on the top, diameter wise. And then to actually install these, you'll need to, uh, it's actually easier to put in the safety selector uh, while you're insta installing the uh, fire control group. Now we're going to start with the trigger assembly comprising of these parts. So first start with your trigger and your trigger spring. And you're essentially going to want it looking like this. So go ahead and just put that on. Just like that. Next you're going to take the spring. Now this is the spring obviously with the larger diameter on the bottom and that goes into right here. Let's go ahead and put that into place. So take your uh, trigger with the spring on there and then take your disconnector and then just put it right into place like that. Now some people like to install these separately. You can do whatever uh, you'd like. I just like to do them at the same time. So go ahead and put that into position in the receiver. Then line it up with this hole here. And to help it kind of keep into place, just put a punch in there just to kind of line everything up, keep it into place. And then you can take your uh, trigger pin and put that on in. Then take your hammer and the hammer spring. And essentially you're going to want it uh, looking about in this orientation there. So go ahead and put that on. Careful not to pinch your fingers, and there you go, it should look just like that. Then take your safety selector, go ahead and put that into place, don't worry about the spring yet. Take your hammer, and you're going to start it behind this pin, just so that spring can get under tension. And then slide it into place so this hole lines up with this hole here. And it will be under tension, so do it carefully. Once that's lined up, go ahead and put your hammer pin in. Now I don't have a non-marring hammer, so I've taken this really small hammer and I put a few layers of tape on there just to hopefully prevent any scratching. And you can go ahead and tap that in. Perfect, no scratches. So once that's in place, you can go ahead and test it. And go ahead and test the safety as well. And without the spring, you kind of have to hold it in place. And it works just fine. Now we're going to install the pivot pin. So you'll have the pivot pin the spring and then the detent and it's a good idea to have some tweezers or pliers or something like that to hold the uh, detent in place. Okay now as you can see this does vary from the AR-15. The AR-15 obviously has that little side pocket where it goes. The AR-308 goes in the front and that does kind of make things a little bit more difficult so you want to be careful because you definitely don't want to lose the spring or especially the detent because those can possibly fly out. So take your spring Go ahead and put that into place. 
and take your detent, start that through as well. And this is where the punch and tweezers come in handy so you don't uh, lose those. Let's go ahead and start that on through. Okay, now this is where that's going to be under tension so you're going to want to be careful. Now I've got a uh, drill bit here that's the smooth part of the shank obviously but it does have some flat edges. I find that's really really useful. It just happens to be the right size. Let's go ahead and push that through. So while you've got that uh, pushed in, these tweezers are actually small enough that I can get in there and stop the detent from moving forward when I remove the punch. This is where things get a little bit tricky. Then I just push that drill bit on forward and it stops the detent from moving forward. Then take your pivot pin, make sure that the groove is facing backwards towards where the detent is, and then just kind of push that on in like so and it locks into place. And you can go ahead and double check that it works. It's being retained. To install the grip, you'll need these parts. You're actually going to install the takedown pin, which has, of course, the spring and detent. The safety selector spring, that's the thicker one with the larger detent. And then, of course, your grip with the screw and washer that go with that. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is ensure that the safety is in the fire position, not the safe position. And even though I've got it flipped around, you can see with this indicator that is in the fire position. Then you're going to want to take your takedown pin and actually insert it partially into the hole there. And you're going to want to actually have the groove up towards the handle. That is another difference between an AR-308 and an AR-15. So go ahead and insert that partially facing upward. Then take your detent for that and put it in the rear hole. And then you can take the detent for your safety selector, which again is the larger one. You're going to want to put that in the hole above the safety selector. Take your spring for your takedown pin. Go ahead and position that into the hole as well. And that's going to only stick partially up, as you can see. And then the spring for your safety selector is actually going to go in the only hole in the grip. And you can see that there. Now when you put the grip on <clears throat> and keep that facing down, you're going to want to hold that spring as you can see it comes out. But also as you can see, that will be going in the safety and there is no hole for the takedown pin spring. So you're going to actually have to push it and hold it down maintaining pressure while being careful not to uh, bend that spring because it obviously is uh, quite delicate and there is no hole or pocket for it to go into. Let's go ahead and put that into place. Making sure everything lines up. Once you have that grip in place and you're maintaining pressure, go ahead and take the bolt with the washer on there. And I've got that on a 3 16 hex bit on a screwdriver. You can go ahead and screw the grip on into place. Once you have the grip installed, you can go ahead and ensure that the takedown pin is being retained, and it is. And of course, you want to make sure that your safety uh, works as well, and if so you need to cock that, and you can move that in the safe. That still works. Fire. And you can hear the audible click as I'm switching that. And then of course the safety works. Okay, now the last step in the lower parts kit installation is going to be installing the buffer tube retainer and the buffer tube retainer spring. First take your buffer retainer spring, put it in that hole, and then take your actual buffer retainer pin put that in there as well. Now one thing that is not included in your lower parts kit that you will actually need uh, obviously eventually but in order to actually retain the buffer retaining pin is of course uh, an actual buffer tube or extension receiver tube. Uh, this particular one is not a carbine as you can see it's actually a DPMS fixed length uh, rifle 
tube. And uh, because of the stock that I'm choosing to put on there, I don't want a carbine stock. So uh, this is a little bit more simple to install than the uh, carbine buffer tubes. Um, this is mil spec. And uh, the good thing to put on there as well before you install is AeroShell uh, 33 Lithium Molly Grease. I like to put it on there because it prevents it from seizing or anything like that. This can also be used on uh, barrel nuts and so forth, and you don't need a whole lot. Now the nice thing is you don't have to worry about this extension tube, is you don't have to worry about a castle nut or, or anything like that. So go ahead and just put that in there and start screwing it in. until you go up and are just touching that retention pin then you go ahead and push that down and finish screwing it in and what that'll do is it'll hold the pin down obviously so it retains it so it doesn't fly out but then of course uh, when you're ready to install your buffer and spring you can go ahead and push that down further so it will actually hold it in that's why it's a good idea to put that in uh, the same time as your lower parts kit so you don't risk losing that um, retainer or its spring. Now as I mentioned before it doesn't have a castle nut you need to worry about but it does have a, a nut here on the end that you can actually get a hold of to tighten it the rest of the way so you'll still need your armor's wrench but instead you'll be using uh, this part of the wrench right here to actually tighten the tube. So just put that on there tighten it up and you're all set thanks so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the rest of this great series